Welcome to this edition of EMU Today TV. We're so pleased that you're able to join us. Sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation with my very special guest and co-host on her final show, Miss Alexis Barron. How are you? I'm good. I'm just a little bit sad. It's the last episode. Well, mm -hmm. well it's, it's, hopefully it's been a great experience for you. It's been a wonderful experience. All right. Yeah. It's, it's been a wonderful experience having you as well. This is our very last show for this academic year, and we always focus on EMU alumni. So I'm, very, I'm so very pleased to welcome Mr. Anthony Tomey, and uh, a recent, well, he graduated several <laughs> years ago <laughs> from Eastern Michigan University. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. I really am uh, excited uh, to talk with you guys today. Yeah, we're so glad to have you. You are a former Eastern Michigan University baseball player and a former Detroit Tiger as well. I, that is correct. I graduated uh, 03, won the MAC championship in 03 as well, uh, drafted by Detroit that, that very summer, and I uh, ended up playing six and a half years with them all the way to 2008, and uh, it was an unbelievable experience. And before we get into your business experience, talk about your experience here at Eastern as a student. Um, great experience here at Eastern. I came in, um, I'm a local guy, came from Farmington Hills, Michigan, uh, Detroit Catholic Central High School, and I uh, was excited to be here and just kind of you know, get away from, the, you know, from my parents and the house and everything. And uh, EMU definitely developed me into you know, the man I am today, I believe. I, you know, I came in, and I had a really good high school. I came here and did really well in school, um, even though my focus was really pretty much on baseball. But I mean, the, the classes, I just kept on getting better and better. And uh, the teachers were, were amazing here. Uh, business school especially. Business school is where I really took off. And, uh, and things really just flourished for me from there. And how did you go from playing professional baseball to, to now you're the second largest franchise owner for Jimmy John's. Correct. Um, well, in 2003, we bought the first store in Novi, Michigan. Uh, we bought it there, so we had the stores while I was playing. And then in 2008, uh, I had to make a decision of, do I keep playing? Um, I was on the borderline of AAA right there, ready to go up, or do I expand the business? And it was a family business. We had my, my brother, my sister, my father, and my uncle were involved. Um, and we were a stationary at three stores. And we're like, do we stay at three, four, five stores, or do we kind of just blow this up? And I really couldn't move at that point unless I did it. Because my sister was still in college, my brother was in high school, and uh, we really had to make a choice. And we just said, well, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and retire from baseball and go full-fledged into sandwiches. So that's mm -hmm. what we did. That's hmm. what we did, so. So going back a little bit into your experiences as a student, what was it like being a student athlete particularly? Was it challenging at all? Uh, yes, it definitely was. I mean, we had to, f you know, there's 24 hours in a day and you just have to fit in school, class itself, practice and or games, travel, and you have to study at some point as well. You have to do your homework, you have to do essays, you have to do projects, meet with group members, and it's not an easy thing to think, well, I have two hours I can meet with you guys otherwise I you know so and, and being being away during the season you know you're on you're out in different states different areas you're on buses um, cell phones weren't as prevalent back then I, I think a couple guys I had one a couple guys had them but we weren't able to communicate as easily or as well no emails on our phones or anything like that so um, it was just a little bit more difficult time to be able to communicate with everybody but um, we made it happen. Uh, a couple crazy stories. I think my first, my second week here, um, co uh, Coach Roger, Roger Coriel, God rest his soul, um, you know, he came in and, and he sat in my class with me. I was like, what's, what's this guy doing here? <laughs> you know, and he shows up and he makes me sit in the front seat with him and, you know, and go. And I said, what, what, what happened, Coach? Why, why are you here? And he's like, well, you got a, a, a D on your first test. Said, yeah, be all right. And he's like, no, I'm going to make sure that you sit here every single day in this first uh. row, every single class you go to, and I'm going to come check up on you and make sure you're doing well in school. And uh, that kind of just turned it for me. It's like, well, I have to do this, obviously. And I came in, and every day I sat in the front row of all my classes, and that just kind of carried me on through Easter. I never sat in the back. I never, you know, I just did what I had to do and made sure I did well and went from there. That's so, really awesome. Yeah. That's dedication right there. It was. It was uh, surprising, to, you know, for sure. But at the same time, once you leave, uh, when you come into college, you're, you're free, right? You can go and do whatever. No one tells you to go to sleep. No one tells you where to eat, what to do, how to do things. And the first couple of weeks or month, you're just like, man, I, I don't know. I'm doing whatever I want. And sometimes you need someone to bring it back down to earth and say, hey, exactly. lock in. 
you're a student athlete, student first, athlete second, you're not that cool, you go ahead and do this and you go to school and do well and that's going to carry you on the rest of your life, not baseball or any other sport you're going to. So, Do you have any specific advice for any current student athletes? Yeah, I mean definitely. I mean, work hard. I've never had anything, no nothing's ever been given to me or to anyone that I know. <laughs> so work hard. Go into school, do your thing. Go into, into, into the gym, go into wherever sport you're playing and just and work hard. You only have a few short years to do this. Not everybody's able to go and play professionally or go to the next level of any sort. And no one can ever take away your degree. That will take you on wherever you go in life. And uh, people just need to understand that. Like, you know, when you come out of high school, you're like, oh, I'm the hot shot, I'm coming in, I'm gonna be this and this and this. and then you put, you put yourself in a reality check because every level you go to in life, you're great, right? You're great in this little pond and the pond just gets bigger and mm -hmm. it becomes a lake and an ocean. And so you have, you know, when you get to that place, you're, you're humbled. They put you in your spot and you're like, okay, well, I'm good, but they're really good as well. And you go to the next level, you play professionally, like I was the best here at Eastern, boom. <laughs> I'm just as <laughs> average as everybody else at playing ball, pro ball. So it just kind of puts you in your, in your place but no one can ever take away your degree from you and what you've done and no one can get into your brain. So you just have to utilize that and, and go from there with it. So how did you prepare yourself? Like I'm about to graduate and people keep asking me, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? How did you prepare yourself for that post-graduation life? Well, I mean, you know, we, we had talked, my, my father and I had talked. My dad was a, is a numbers genius. He's a, pretty much a human calculator and he was like, I need you to, what do you want to do after school? And I'm like, I'm going to play baseball. I'm like, well, no, in reality, what are you going to really do? And I'm like, I'm going to play baseball, Dad. And he's like, well, okay, let's find something else to do as well. So we ended up opening up the Jimmy John's um, and opened our first tour in 2003. So I was running that stuff, you know, uh, from home. I had, you know, my uncle was running the stores. My dad was doing stuff. But, like, it was only the three of us. My brother was literally barely in high school, and my sister was in college at Michigan State. So... I was doing all that stuff while playing ball, which is kind of what I was doing at Eastern. I was a student athlete. I was doing school this way. I was doing it the other way around. So it worked well. I mean, we just kind of kept on growing and growing and growing. And then we went to three stores when I, when I, when I retired to what, 24 stores 10 years later. And then I doubled up to 50 stores this past year. <laughs> so. Yeah. And talk to us about, let's look at the business side for a moment. How did Eastern prepare you for that business that you're currently in? What were some of the concepts, obviously not a great level of detail, but just yeah. some of the very basic things that you learned as a student that you're currently using now as yeah. a business professional? I mean, uh, the biggest thing is time management. You know, like people are not able, I see, I work with a lot of people that are not organized, not able to go from A to B to C to D all the way through. That's one of the biggest things I had to do at Eastern taught me that because I did have other things to do besides go to class all day. I had class, I had practice, I had this, I had to go on social outings, do whatever I had to do. But now I am literally, boom, on a schedule. I can get everything done at all times. And that was probably the biggest thing because I was always just able just to kind of freelance and do whatever I wanted. And now it's just like, boom, you have to get things done. And if you don't, then you're behind. And once you're behind, you're always behind. And Eastern really definitely taught me that, that you had to get, get ahead of the game and everything will go, will go fine from there. I definitely agree. Time management is way more important to just building like a life skill than people think because you have, like you had practice, classes, social life. To balance all of those things, you need to really mark it down into like an algorithm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 100%. So, 100%. got kind of an interesting question about kind of graduating again. A lot of people will say that college is the best years of your life, like hands down. Do you agree with that? I mean, definitely. I mean, we had, I had a great time here at school. Uh, I met so many great friends. I still have many great friends from my college years, so many connections. And, and you know, in life, you can learn everything you want in college. You can be the smartest person in your whole entire college. But at the end of the day, it's about connections and networking. It's who you know, not what you know sometimes. And you have to have a balance of both, don't get me wrong. You can't, you know, you have to have some knowledge. But at the end of the day, uh, Eastern has definitely connected me to many different uh, avenues in life, different people, um, you know, throughout the whole, my whole life. I mean, not that I have a really long life, I'm 38, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm getting up there a little bit. And so um, 
even from my high school, even from that, I still have connections through that. So uh, it's, every, it's everyone you meet, and that's really the biggest thing you can do in life is anyone you know because that leads you to this and to this and to this, and then different avenues in life bring you to where you are today. So, Yeah, and I think you are the second largest franchisee in the entire system, is that right? Correct. And you have, I believe, 50 locations primarily in Metro Detroit or they're across the state of Michigan? Where All Metro Detroit. All Metro Detroit. Correct. Talk to us about, from a business standpoint, uh, running a business of 50 restaurants. <laughs> it's tough. It is tough. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we just have, we just, finding employees is very hard right now at this point, and we just want to keep, you know, keep working hard and just keep uh, good service, good customer service, obviously, and treat your people well, and they will always come back and, and treat you well as well. Well, Anthony, told me, uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for spending your time with us and sharing your experience with Eastern Michigan. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, I really appreciate you uh, bringing me on the show today. And my pleasure. We have Jaden Shorts is going to be talking to us about women's basketball and gymnastics. And by the way, recently the men's track team came in second, and the women most recently won the Mid-American Conference. March and at universities across the country, that means championship time. Two of Eastern Michigan's teams in the thick of title chases are gymnastics and women's basketball. We spoke to the head coach of our gymnastics team, one of her athletes, and the women's basketball coach to find out more about these programs that too often fly under the radar. Let's take a look. Go Eagles! I think that you winning the MAC is going out there and just being us and what we do in the gym every day in practice is so awesome and they, they're so talented they're so confident in the gym and being able to go out there and just relax and have fun i think the key to winning the mac is our confidence and going in and knowing that our training has led us to be exactly where we're supposed to be and that we're going to peak at the exact right time it's about mental toughness knowing that they're prepared and capable of going out there and achieving their best on that day. I am a nursing major. Uh, my ultimate goal is to first just become a, an RN, so get that bachelor's in nursing, and then ultimately I want to go back and um, get my master's, de master's degree to become a nurse practitioner. We really instill that academics is the number one priority and then gymnastics, so I think making sure that they're a well-rounded individual, academics, gymnastics, social life, family life, we try and create a family culture here. Um, when I step on that mat, um, I also think about my team. In high school and throughout my whole life, it's more of just an individual sport, but when you get to college, it's much more um, a team atmosphere. Another really awesome thing about gymnastics is all the um, life skills that you learn, and I use those every day. Yeah! Oh, there's so many things that I love about coaching. The relationships that I gain with each and every one of my athletes from the first year that I started coaching till now, it's been incredible. Also, one of my favorite things about coaching is watching them come in as freshmen and mature throughout the four years and become beautiful young women and, and succeed after college. Especially this year, I feel like I've grown to become a better leader, especially because I'm focusing just on bars right now that I can um, sit back and look at everyone and um, be there when they need someone to talk to or just be there to give them confidence. Confidence! Part of having a young group uh, as a coach is exciting because you get to do a lot of teaching um, and you get to see a lot of growing, but there are some growing pains, if you will. Uh, we're a very athletic group. Uh, we've got a lot of talent, a lot of depth, a uh, group that can really play fast, get up and down, uh, really uh, can create problems for you defensively because of our speed, because of our size. And I think that leads to an exciting brand of basketball. Uh, we're going to play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. We're going to cause a lot of chaos. Uh, and then hopefully that chaos results in some um, turnovers, which leads to transition basketball. This is a time of year where you really want to be 
clicking on all cylinders um, and be the best version of yourself. Uh, there's so much at stake uh, in so many different ways. As long as you're playing your best version of basketball right now and moving forward, that's really what it's all about. It's almost palpable. You know, you can really sense it, you can feel it. Uh, you know, when you turn on Sports Center, you can see all the conference standings for all the leagues across the country because you know what it means and what it leads to in terms of postseason play and conference tournament play. And that's really where the magic happens, if you will. Uh, when these guys leave here after four years, a lot of their memories are going to be like, remember that time in March when we went on a streak and we did this and we did that. Uh, so that's what we're trying to create now. We want to make sure academically they are going through the process and not just getting a degree, but getting an education and getting a foundation that's going to allow them to be, be successful in the real world. There's a lot of parts to it. The thing is that a lot of them work hand in hand. Uh, I think the more successful they are in the classroom, the more successful they tend to be on the court. Uh, the more they can mature socially, the more they can mature on the court because they understand big picture concepts, being selfless, understand uh, the importance of um, true discipline and going the extra mile. Every senior we've had has graduated and they are doing well. Some are coaching, some are teaching, some are accountants. Uh, so it's always, it's nice to see them come back and see them walk in and be really proudful of what Eastern Michigan has done for them and how their experience here is now helping them be successful in the real world. Seven. Website to keep up with all of our sports. I'm Jaden Schertz and this is EMU Today. Thank you Jaden Schertz for that report on the women's basketball and gymnastics team. We're very proud of all the things that they're doing as well. And uh, welcome back and we're sp spending this episode focusing on EMU alums. We have another very special guest, Mr. Eric Brown, one of our distinguished alums. Eric, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, Mark and Alexis. And, and tell us, uh, what, what did you get your degree in from Eastern Michigan? I get it in health administration. Health administration. Yes. And as a distinguished alum, I mean, one thing I know about you, you have been very much engaged in the university after you graduated. Why is that important to you? Well, Eastern has meant a lot to me. They gave me a chance as a junior in high school. I got to step to here. And I did not come immediately from high school to Eastern Michigan University. I went to an HBCU down in Alabama, Talladega College. Mm -hmm. And I was down there for two years. And we wouldn't really say I got homesick, but I wanted to come back home, and I sent a letter to Eastern Michigan University about transferring, and they accepted me again. They accepted <laughs> you again, and, and now you're currently working in, I believe, in HR in Detroit. In Romulus, actually. In Romulus, Michigan. Yes. And what does that job entail? It entails a lot. I mean, sometimes people refer to it as a high-priced babysitter, and that's <laughs> a very interesting thing to say because you have to deal with so much. Um, people have a lot of problems, a lot of problems you don't want to know about. But the role requires you being involved and engaged with the people. It's all about employee relations, also about being a customer service rep to the employees. So going back a little bit, what was your experience like as a student here at Eastern? Um, probably too much fun at times, <laughs> but I think the greatest experience is the networking aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I am still very close to a lot of friends I met while I was here. Same thing at Talladega College, but also uh, very um, close with a lot of professors that I had as well as administrators. I'm fortunate to be able to say that I knew every president from back in 1984 from Dr. Porter all the way up to now and I think that's important. You have to get to know your professors, your teachers and I was not one to sit in the front of the classroom but I spent time after class getting to know my professors. We didn't have a lot of things as it relates to TAs back then. Mm -hmm. So getting to know the professor was important because you get to know your professor. If you're on the borderline of a decent grade or a better grade, you get the benefit of the doubt because that person knows you. Were you a part of any extracurricular groups while you were here? I was a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I still am a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity mm -hmm. Incorporated. We spent a lot of time, my fraternity, playing a lot of intramural sports. I was um, two years the 60 meter indoor champ for uh, intramurals, so a lot of people thought I was on the track team. 
And I ran a track in high school, so I was a sprinter, but I just enjoy the extracurricular activities as regards to sports as well as other things. I was a charter member of the first Greek Life Task Force here at Eastern Michigan University, one of only four from the Divine Nine organizations, which are the Black Greek Love organizations, the only male from the Divine Nine organization, kept by the side. My relationship with Betty White at the time, as well as Les Bates, the assistant dean of uh, students, helped me to get those roles. So for any current students that might not currently be a part of anything, would you say that it is a beneficial thing to do extracurriculars while in college? Yes, I definitely, without a doubt. We, as an HR professional, we look at the extracurricular things. We don't just look at someone that came to school, got a 4.0. You have to have some diversity. We want to see a well-rounded person. Yes, it's good to have that 4.0, but what did you do besides go to class? What friendships did you develop? What relationships did you develop with um, professors? And being in organizations does that for you, and it's very important to have that on your resume. So I am currently in that process of I'm about to graduate, I don't exactly have a job lined up. Do you have any advice for that like post-graduation life of applying to jobs and what kind of that process, what does it look like? Well, Alex, I'm not sure if you are a part of any uh, organizations here on campus as it relates to what your career is. I was a part of the HASO, Health Administration Students of, of America. Mm -hmm. That was very important for me because going to conferences, getting to meet people from all over the country, getting, new, getting to meet professionals from all over the country, it started the networking for me. Mm -hmm. And you have to do, get that networking in. I spoke a few times at the graduation as the President of the Alumni Association. The one thing I always spoke about was learning art and networking people fail to realize that the previous guest talked about it's not what you know it's who you know and getting to know people will go a long way yeah and I noticed Eric uh, and I've known you in full disclosure I've known you for a while you've actually come in and uh, you taught one of my classes as well you've been a right. guest lecturer in my classroom um, but one thing I noticed about you you're always giving back to Eastern Michigan you're always reaching back to current students and talking to them why is that important to you, and, and what are you trying to communicate to those students that you're re reaching back to, whether it's your fraternity, whether it's independently, as the law? Well, it's very important. I'll be leaving here today to go do a, an HR networking event over at Student Center Building with my fraternity. That's very important because one of the things I learned when I was in college is that college does not really prepare you for going to interviews. So they have to have that extra push to get them to understand the importance of a good resume, a a uh, decent email address and very limited on the social media we look at that now and some of the things we see on social media I mean I wouldn't hire a person just based on what they post I will not if I see on a social media site someone with a beer can in their hand someone smoking legal or illegal cigarettes that just does not bode well yeah you know that's that's pretty interesting what you're saying we know that social media is very prevalent definitely a lot of students are using it all the time I think you get some great advice if you could give a couple more tips about social media because I think, you know, again, Alexis has grown up with it, not me, right. you know, but she has. And, and talk to the other students who may be watching, younger folks who might be watching this the show today, and give them some other tips of what they should and should not be doing with social media. Well, what they should. as it relates to a job. Well, course. as it relates to a job, but if you already have a job, we, your, um, your boss or your manager, director, if you work for a company, do not be on your job, posting from your job, particularly in the manufacturing industry, because in the manufacturing industry where I work, you have a lot of um, information that's proprietary information. So putting that stuff on social media, your competitor has an edge over you, and you never want to be posting that work. And we can always tell if you did their work, what time it was, because all this stuff is day stamped now. I mean, I was in college yourself as well, Je um, Jeff Larkin and everyone else. We were in college when uh, pretty much smoke snick signals was our social media. <laughs> you know, that was our text messaging. And now everything is so convenient, and everyone wants to be the first to provide information about how they um, um, drank the most beer out of a bung. No, don't put that stuff on social media. You have to be very conscientious to understand that as professionals you can be all the time, be professional, because you never know who's looking. Or who's watching. That's good advice. So for uh, recent grads like me, other than of course like networking and being careful with your social media, do you have any more advice about like the job application process, like interviews and resumes, how those should look and act? Well not just the job application process. Say for instance you um, want to go to work at WXYZ. Reach out to someone there. LinkedIn is probably the best professional avenue of social media you can find. Everyone that is on LinkedIn has their name, their picture, their email address, 
you know, reach out to Carolyn Clifford, say, hey, this is my uh, passion. I would like to come in to shadow you one day. And that goes a long way. Most people are willing to allow someone to come in and shadow them because it's, a, it's also a way for them to say, I have done my part that someone wants to come shadow me. And it just is a, a pat on back for them. I love what you said earlier, Eric, <coughs> as well, about the uh, connection to the professors. A lot of times students view professors as X and, and professors to students as Y. Talk about the importance of that relationship between the students and the professors and why students should, and, you know, reach out to them and, and have them as part of their support system. Well, it's, it's very important. You know, as I stated, you know, James Ucar, who was a, or still is a professor here in the Department of uh, Communications and English, um, Richard Doug is a retiree. I still communicate with him on a regular basis. But they are able to provide not just advice for you in your career, but you may need a letter of recommendation for something. And to be able to go back to someone and say, would you mind writing a letter of rec recommendation? I do it a lot now. But I base my letter of recommendation based on what type of relationship I have with someone. What did they do to show me an interest in their field? And a lot of professors do that same thing. If you show a commitment to them, you show a passion for what you're trying to do or what you want to be, they will have no doubt uh, writing a letter of recommendation for you. My first job I got while I was still in college, I worked out at Cranbrook. The letter of recommendations I got came from Betty White and Les Bates. So I've already asked this question to Anthony. A lot of people will say that college is the best years of your life. Do you agree with that statement? Um. College was fun. <laughs> uh, high school was fun, too, because I think um, the difference between high school the, as far as the 11th grade, 12th grade year and the formative, year, formative years of college, it's all about uh, making a name for yourself, getting to know people. And I think that's one of the best things that college provides for you. You go to a college, you're meeting people from not all over the state, but you're meeting people all over the country and all mm -hmm. over the world. And it's very important to get to know people and learn about their cultures because you never know you might find yourself in India, China, uh, anywhere, Africa, and it helps a lot. Yeah, and I think the importance of certainly diversity is, is getting exposure to all different types of people is important uh, professionally as well as socially as well. Correct, without a doubt. And one of the things that Eastern Michigan has provided for me is that opportunity to do that meet people. Uh, once upon a time, the first year center was International Center, and that stayed open 24 hours, three, five, 365. And that was an opportunity to meet people from various countries, hang out with them, play in the real sports with them, and just learn about their culture. It makes you a more well-rounded person as well. well. Eric Brown, I want to thank you very much for joining us and giving us some outstanding advice here on EMU Today TV. Thanks very much. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks, Alexis. Thanks. Good luck to you. Yeah, Thank you so I, much. I, I appreciate closing. it. This is your very last uh, show. You have 15, it or give you 10 seconds to say anything you'd like to say. I just really appreciate this experience. Um, ETV has meant a lot to me in my just years at Eastern, and I will hold it close to my heart. All right, we wish you much continued success. So thank you very thank much. You. All right. And we thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we will check you out next time on EMU Today TV. This is our last show for this particular academic year, and we will see you again in the fall in the not-too-distant not future. Thanks.